morning, Robert. Morning, Mom. How are you doing? I'm well. I'm well. It's so weird. We've been doing this for how long? A year and almost a half. And I have had butterflies in my stomach all morning. Really? Yeah, I don't know why. That's it's good. like it, it's it's not like like a kind of like dreadful butterflies, mm-hmm. but this is the first time in a very long time I've been like you're going to take the lead, Lonnie. Really? Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. It was just kind of an interesting kind of like little side note to myself. Well, good. Well, it's nice to know that like after a year and some change, we still enjoy doing it. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. Yeah. And, I, and you know, we just revamped it not too long ago. And mm-hmm. I really like the, um, I really like where it's going. How it's flowing. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So today is um, my day to talk about a subject and all of that good stuff. Mm-hmm. And today's subject is, um, okay, I, I'm all giggly because I, I, I named my subject. Okay. I named the title and it says, now is the time to tell your critical inner voice to mm-hmm. shut the f*** up. Okay. All right. And I was like... I came up with this title. I'm like, man, that's really cool. Yeah, it's perky. Yeah, it's perky. So yeah, so now, you know what? It's time to to just tell your your critical inner voice Mm -hmm. to shut the fuck up. So how did you come, like what what made you pick this topic? Well, I have always um, struggled with a really critical inner voice. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the things that led me to addiction. It's one of the things that led me to depression, Mm -hmm. um, anxiety, the whole thing. And in my sober journey, I have, this has been one of the most important thing of growth is keeping my critical inner voice at bay or managed, let's just say that. And lately I have noticed um, a little bit of a more of a struggle Okay. with my inner voice. Okay. And for me, it's like, hmm, I need to revisit, figure out what's going on mm-hmm. and get a better grasp of my my inner voice. Sure. So I, I have it broken down into how I do that. Okay. Basically, this is my... This is your step-by-step. Step step. Yeah. This okay. is my step-by-step step of how I do it and how I keep it under control. Okay. And so for me, in any kind of like self... Um, self kind of like um, improvement journey, Mm -hmm. it's always important for me to figure out um, what's going on. Mm -hmm. Like the whole who, what, where, why kind of thing. You mean like in terms of like what, like who, what, where, when, why did your inner voice start getting louder? No, more of like, I'm, I'm going to go all the way back to the very beginning. Okay. So if somebody's out there and they're struggling with their own um, critical inner voice, mm-hmm. I want it to be how they can start their journey. Okay. So it, to me, it's like a refresher course, okay. but I don't want to talk about it in the terms of like somebody who already has their critical inner voice okay. under control. This yeah. is going to be starter steps for anybody who wants to start control. Or if it. their inner voice starts slipping. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So if you need a refresher course like myself, mm-hmm. this this is going to be a good tip. Okay. So you're basically just you're just basically reiterating what the your process and how to quell that that mean inner voice. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Got exactly. It, got it. Okay. So for me again, it's um, it, it's, I have to know my enemy in mm-hmm. order for me to to um, to stop something. I have to know what I'm stopping. Sure. So we're going to start with exactly like what is your inner voice? Mm-hmm. And it was really interesting to me because I didn't realize how much we talk to ourselves mm-hmm. and statistics is there's been some studies and we as humans, our inner voice talks to us 4,000 words a minute. Okay. And to put that into perspective, like the president's um, state of the union mm-hmm. speech is typically 6,000 words Mm -hmm. and takes an hour. Mm -hmm. So the amount of information that our brain is just shoving at us Mm -hmm. is immense. It's a very good analogy too. Thank you. And I didn't realize, I mean, if you really stop and you listen to your inner voice, I I had no idea it was that, Mm -hmm. that prevalent. Mm -hmm. So I was kind of like, wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah, super cool. Then also too, so... Your inner voice is basically breaking it down even more. Your inner voice, whether whether it's critical or not critical, Mm -hmm. can be your best friend. It can be your worst enemy. Yeah. All right. So, but what your inner voice does is it tells you how you're perceiving the world. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's 
how you perceive life and basically how you read life. Mm -hmm. So if you have an experience, let's just say you see something, your inner voice is going to tell you how you're perceiving it. Okay. So whether it's positive or negative. So some people, you know how you see some people and they always see the bright side of everything. Mm -hmm. It's because that's the way their inner voice is kind of like um, analyzing it. Sure. And then if you have a critical inner voice, those are the people who are always very negative. Mm -hmm. So again, I thought that in doing my research, I thought it was really kind of interesting how I never realized those negative people, it's because that's the way their inner voice is perceiving the world. Sure. I mean, it makes total sense. Yeah. You know, that's what people are like, oh, I'm just a glass half full kind of person mm -hmm. or like I'm a glass half empty. And it just, it makes sense that, you know, there's inner workings like at play. Right. Yeah. And so since our minds are so busy mm -hmm. it's up to us to regulate it sure. so it's either again it's either your best friend or it's your worst enemy mm -hmm. so um buddha and i want to just quote buddha because i sure. thought this was really interesting and it says your life is a creation of your mind okay so again it's like looking back mm -hmm. at my journey of where i've been when i was not sober my mind the creation of my life what my mind was doing, it was dark, it was just mm -hmm. horrible. Mm -hmm. And then switching that inner voice mm -hmm. helped me make more of a, a positive life. Totally. Makes total sense. All right. So now that we know what your inner voice is, how much it talks to you, mm -hmm. how it makes you perceive the world, we need to figure out where did this critical inner voice come from? Sure. All right. So you can come in. You can come grab coffee. Yeah. <laughs> He's like a little goblin. <laughs> so actually it, sorry what? can you go in my room and get my coffee yeah. okay so um so okay so we all have an inner voice it's yeah. part of our working function it is part of us as a as as humans yeah but where does it turn i mean where does it go from being just a part of our life how we're perceiving the world mm -hmm. to becoming this immensely critical just horrible sure. entity that is telling us bad things yeah and so of course you know it, it's um childhood trauma is a huge one mm -hmm. because um it says right here that i read that as by nature we are connected to people mm -hmm. and when you have a childhood to where you don't have that nurturing you're you're not processing things properly mm -hmm. and i know for myself that um you know it's like I thought I could fix things a little bit more in my childhood. And mm -hmm. then when it didn't fix things, mm -hmm. my inner voice was like, well, you're not good enough. You didn't mm -hmm. do that well enough. You weren't, you know, you weren't this enough. You weren't that enough. So by not having that proper nurturing, it was like um, a field day for that critical inner voice. Sure. Makes total sense. And so, and then, so it's really easy for me to like um, say that, but that's not necessarily the case for everybody mm -hmm. because sometimes you can have like a little bit more of a later start at a critical mm -hmm. um, inner voice. I mean, it can come from chronic depression. It can come from anxiety. Mm -hmm. You can have um, a partner who is very like narcissistic, mm -hmm. very emotionally abusive, mm -hmm. and that's just going to turn your positive inner voice to a negative inner voice. Mm -hmm. So for me, the next step is really important for, um, to finding out where did it go wrong? Mm -hmm. You know, what was the turning point? Sure. Because I think you have to, and again, I think you just have to figure out where it turned in order to be able to, um, get to, um, step number three. Okay. And step number three is, um, we need to start fighting back. Mm -hmm. All right. Because the, oh, or maybe go back. We're not step three yet. We're okay. going to stay at step number two. Because if you're out there and you're like, okay, so I think I have a critical inner voice. I'm not really too sure. Mm -hmm. I could be happier. I did want to give some examples as to what a critical um, voice sounds like. Sure. All right. So for examples um, of a critical inner voice, it's when you tell yourself you're stupid, mm -hmm. you're not attractive, mm -hmm. you're not like other people, mm -hmm. you don't deserve love, mm -hmm. you know, all those kind of things. Now, do you think they use that? Just to kind of be the devil's advocate, do you think they use that as like a coping mechanism in case of like something, if something goes wry, like let's say like they didn't get the job that they wanted or they like, um, 
you know, they asked somebody out on a date and they said no. Do, they, do, do you think that kind of like it kind of manifests there? Well, I think, no, I think it goes deeper than okay. that. I think you already have a critical inner voice okay. at that point. Because mm-hmm. let's just say if you have a positive um, self thought yeah. and you go and you ask somebody out on a date mm-hmm. and they're like, no. Mm-hmm. If you have a healthy inner voice, it's like, oh, wow, you know what? I, you I know, tried. I tried. Gotcha. I'm really proud of myself okay. for that. Okay. A critical inner voice will be like, well, no wonder they didn't want to go out with you gotcha. because you're fat, stupid, and ugly. Okay. That makes total sense. You know what I mean? Yeah, that makes sense. So I think you are already there. Mm-hmm. So if you do hear yourself telling yourself these things, you need to know that your critical inner voice already has a good hold on you. Mm-hmm. So, and, and sometimes it's not always just personal things like that. Mm-hmm. It can actually go over to like a work environment. Mm-hmm. So examples for having a critical inner voice in a work environment mm-hmm. would be like, nobody appreciates my hard work. Gotcha. You can't handle the stress or you're under too much pressure. Gotcha. So whereas a, somebody with a positive self thought would mm-hmm. be like, you know what? I'm, tr- I, I'm really proud of myself of the job mm-hmm. I'm doing mm-hmm. instead of like, nobody appreciates sure. me. You know, again, it's just that it's, mm-hmm. it's such a fine line, but mm-hmm. such a huge gap totally. between positive and negative self thought. Totally. So, and it goes back to the step number one, how you perceive your life. Mm-hmm. So if you do have this critical inner voice, you're perceiving your life as you're not worthy. You know, you're not appreciated. Mm-hmm. You're not this and you're not mm-hmm. that. Where chances are it's completely false. Yeah. You know, and it, it again, it's your critical inner voice that is painting this this perception of your life in such a negative way. Totally. So, so now that we understand where it came from, what it is, now we need to start fighting back. Gotcha. All right. So, because I do want to give, um, and I do want to focus mostly on like the steps on how to stop that critical thinking. Mm -hmm. I think it's important to know that you have it, but you really need to have those tools to fight it because it's really easy. You know what? And what really sometimes really gets to me is when people are like, well, just stop thinking that way. Yeah. And it's not that easy. The same you know? thing with like depression. They're like, well, just be happy. Yeah. 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 You know what? It's, it's decades of abuse. It's mm-hmm. years of abuse. It's, it's, it's inner turmoil or, or inner trauma that we haven't addressed that just keeps on manifesting these negative things. Totally. So if you're out there and you do have these negative self thoughts, you need to surround yourself with people who are going to be supportive, Mm -hmm. not like, well, just stop doing it or you're over exaggerating or I don't know why you say it. You know, one of the most important steps to fighting it is compassion. Sure. Not only compassion for others, but compassion for ourselves. Yeah. Okay. Makes total sense. Yeah. So my biggest tip on fighting your critical inner voice Mm -hmm. is, I know she's starting her little pile over there, is to give that critical inner voice an actual physical shape. Sure. All right. Because I've said this before and I say it all the time in like my sober journey, Mm -hmm. but I personally can't fight something I cannot see. Yeah. Makes total sense. So yeah. Yeah. So it's like you have this, this version of like either a person, Mm -hmm. an entity, Mm -hmm. um, a squirrel, it Mm -hmm. doesn't matter, but you have to see these words coming out of the mouth of that other person, Totally, you know? And for me, Mm -hmm. my other entity has always been like, kind of like a black blob Mm -hmm. kind of thing. I've I've had a dream about it. Mm -hmm. So to me, it's really easy to physically see it. And when I do find myself slipping into like, kind of like that negative, critical self thought kind of like pattern. I was thinking about it this morning when we were cleaning the house that sometimes I feel like the moment I wake up, it's standing there waiting for me. Sure. You know, it's kind of like one of those scary movies. I know you don't like scary movies, but it's always the one where somebody's in bed and they wake up and they're like some Mm -hmm. goblin is sitting in a chair. Totally. To me, it's like that. Okay. It's always waiting for the opportunity to, to speak up again. Mm -hmm. So for me personally, and I don't know if everybody is this, um, has it that ingrained, Mm -hmm. but to me, it's, it's something that I'm going to have to be aware of for the rest of my life. Sure. You know, because I spent so many decades with it. Mm -hmm. To me, it's always going to be something that I'm going to have to be conscientious of. So Again, give it a physical form, whether it's somebody or whatever it is. So when I do that, now I wake up and I'm like, oh, 
okay, where are you at? Yeah. And then if I do, because I mean, sometimes I've mentioned like I've woken up with some really negative ones. Mm -hmm. I will instantly stop it and be like, no, shut up. You're not welcome. Yeah. And it helps me to address it that way. Good. That's awesome. Okay. Now, number two is you mm-hmm. have to stand up to them. Mm-hmm. And it's so funny when, not like funny haha, but so ironic that we have to teach ourselves to hold up for ourselves with ourselves. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. And it's, it's, and people who don't have this critical inner voice, I don't know if they can really understand the perception of, like having to actually defend yourself from your dis- from yourself, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but you have to look at it in that kind of way. I think everyone's at, at some point or another somewhat critical of themselves. Mm-hmm. I don't think there's one person alive who's like inner voice is like, yeah, dude, you're awesome. Keep being awesome. No, I mean everybody has those self doubts, mm-hmm. yeah. but it, it's the difference between having a healthy inner voice. It's it's a balance, mm-hmm. you know, and that's actually going to be my um, topic when it's my week again. Yeah. It's keeping a balance of the healthy self voice mm-hmm. and the critical self voice, you know, sure. because that's just human nature. Sure. And I'm not talking about people who are like, wow, I just had a down day. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about a critical inner voice that keeps you so oppressed mm-hmm. that you, you have absolutely no positive self image. Sure. Totally. You know, makes total sense. Yeah. yeah. And it's that kind of depth of having that critical inner voice mm-hmm. to where you have no positive inner voice, Sure, you know, so you have to stand up to yourself, mm-hmm. stand up to yourself. And just like if you saw, let's just say you're driving down the street and there's like a bus stop and some kids just got off the bus and mm-hmm. they're all picking on the little kid. Yeah. You would stop and be like, Hey, don't do that. Yeah. You know, leave that little kid alone. Mm-hmm. And you are that little kid and you need to have that same sense of like, I'm going to hold up for that person. Mm -hmm. You need to do that for yourself. Sure. Makes sense. You know? Yeah. So, and it's so much easier again, and I totally Mm -hmm. understand it, but it's so much easier to hold up for somebody else, Mm -hmm. to compliment somebody Mm -hmm. else, to forgive somebody else. And it's so difficult to do that to ourselves, but, but we have to, yeah, I absolutely agree. You You know, there's just no way to fight it until you start doing it. Now, when I was reading this, um, I, cause I, I did my little research. One of the tips was to ignore it. And I don't agree with that. Yeah. Cause you just, you're bearing it. You're bearing it. And so ignoring it is, I mean, I get what it's saying and maybe that would imply like if you had a healthier inner voice and then those critical ones come up, you can just ignore it and continue on with your healthy one. But if you have absolutely no healthy inner or kind inner voice, ignoring the negative ones, is just going to your your negative self thought is going to be like, see, I told you you couldn't mm-hmm, do it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, see, I told you, I mm-hmm. told you so. Yeah. And so, I say, don't ignore it. No, I agree with you. As long as you have that struggle. Totally. Um, and this one really. Is it still? We're we still on two. No, we're moving on to actually. It was give it a form, mm-hmm. stand up to them, ignore them was number three. But I say don't ignore them. Yeah, don't ignore them. And then number four was. And I thought this was really interesting. And there's one word in here that really kind of like sparked a hmm moment. Mm, Sure. But it says, be assertive. Imagine what you would say or do if you weren't afraid of your voices. Okay. So it's almost like you're like, I don't want to say role playing, but you're, what would confident, you know, inner voice say? Yeah. Like negative inner voice? Yeah. And also, but afraid. It's like, so that kind of like brought me back to like in my marriage. Yeah. It's like I lived in fear. I lived in fear of doing the wrong thing Mm -hmm. and then starting a whole avalanche of like um, just narcissistic behavior. So to me, it's like I found myself living in fear of my own inner voice. And it wasn't until I realized it's like, what's the worst that can happen? You know, what what, are you just going to say more mean things about yourself? Yeah. And I think that that's a like a um, like a going down like multiple different levels as to where this started. Totally, it's always being the fear of opening your mouth and having something bad happen. Mm-hmm. And I think it's really super important to know that you you don't have to be afraid of your inner voice. Sure, you know, I love it that you're in control. Yeah, 
you know? Yeah. And number five is just to know that you are in control of this conversation. Mm -hmm. You know, it might seem insurmountable when you start, mm -hmm. but you are in control of what your, your voice tells you. Mm -hmm. And that leads us to the very last thing that we're talking about. Sure. Can you tell I did my research? I can tell. Yeah. You came with your, with your guns loaded. Yes. So the, uh, the number one, tip for you if you are starting yourself um yourself journey to stop mm -hmm. your critical inner voice or if you're on a refresher mm -hmm. but it is to stop and then start sure and by that i mean you need to stop and listen to what those four thousand words are mm. You know, you, it's really hard for us to determine what we're telling ourselves mm -hmm. when we're active. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Like if you're driving your car, you're not like, okay, let me just think about what my voice is saying instead of looking and making sure that I'm driving safe. Totally. But when you are at that stoplight mm -hmm. and you don't have anything to do, but for wait for that green light yeah. At that point, you need to know what you're saying to yourself. Sure. And I say this because that's what happened to me. Yeah. Because I remember when I first got sober and I went to a counselor, he told me about self voices mm -hmm. and all of that. And I'm like, <laughs> whatever, you know, I'm fine. I don't say bad things. And I was driving to work and I was down by the duck pond mm -hmm. and I was waiting for the green light. And I decided to hear what my voices were saying. Mm -hmm. And they were the most horrific things I think I'd ever heard. Sure. I wasn't worthy. I wasn't going to do it. You mm -hmm. know, why try? Mm -hmm. Why this? Mm -hmm. Why that? And I'm like, holy guacamole, Batman. Yeah, yeah. I had no idea. Sure. And it was litter. It was like, just like. It's just kind of like, just like how your car was idling. You were idling and you, like you took the chance to like actually hear what was going on. Yeah. Because yeah. you know what? It's so subtle mm -hmm. and it becomes almost like a rhythm that we're used to hearing. Sure. So for us, it's like we don't pay any attention to mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And if we don't stop and listen to it and pay attention to it, we're not going to know the gravity of the um, critical things that we're telling ourselves. Totally. Makes total sense. So whether or not you're at a stoplight, but we all have those moments where we have downtime. Mm -hmm. You know, we can be in the shower. Mm -hmm. We can be going to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. We can be um, getting dressed. I mean, just uh, those those few moments that we are laying there in bed right before we fall asleep, yeah. those are the important times to figure out what you're telling yourself, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So it is super important to stop then and hear what you're actually saying. Totally. And then with that is to start, you know, once we, um, know those mean critical things that we're telling ourselves mm -hmm. we have to be active mm -hmm. you know this isn't something to be where like yeah i just don't want to say that and it, it's you have to you have to fix what is broken mm -hmm. you know you have to put those steps into place that is um, going to work for you to be able to change your way of thinking mm -hmm. and then not only change it but how you can have your defense systems for when it tries to sneak back in totally you know, yeah. and I think one of the most important things to do when you're starting this journey of getting your arsenal to fight this critical inner voice yeah. is self-compassion. Sure. You know, when you start to forgive yourself for anything, it takes away the sting of your critical inner voice, yeah. you know, and I, I actually came up with some examples mm -hmm. because I think that's really super important. Yeah. So when if you find your, your negative self talk, when it says like, um, I don't, I don't deserve to be loved. For example, she's getting a toy very loudly. Mm, yeah. Like you said, like, um, your example was you asked somebody out on a date mm -hmm. and they say, no, yeah. that was actually one of my examples. Got you. And again, it's, you know, if you have that critical inner voice and it's telling you that you don't deserve love, mm -hmm. you have to have that self-compassion that, um, of just like, it's okay because you know what, there is somebody out there who loves me. Absolutely. You know what? I'm proud of myself for asking that person out on a date. Yeah. You have to, you have to go into any situation that you're going into that is a little bit out of your comfort zone mm -hmm. with an art, with your backup. Totally. You know, if you're going to be doing something scary and it's like something that you might fail at because mm -hmm. we all try things that don't work out. Yes. We need to come in 
already with like, if it doesn't work out, this is what I'm going to tell myself. Mm -hmm. Super important. I love it. Okay. Now, if you find yourself telling yourself like I'm unattractive, mm -hmm. you know, if you're like, oh, I would wear that, but you know, my legs aren't perfect. Sure. Or, you know, I would wear that, but I, I need to lose five pounds. You mm -hmm. know, that's a critical inner thought. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I would say I'll, the majority of people have. Sure. And instead of being like, you know what? I would wear shorts, but my legs are, are ugly or something like that. Mm -hmm. Just tell yourself you are the best, best version of you that you can be. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, and now, be proud of it. Now, okay, so this brings up a point. Could you be like, I'm the best person, the best version of myself? that I could be like at the moment yeah. or, okay. Yeah. Because like you could still be like, well, right now I uh, like, sure. I could lose five pounds, but I am, I'm perfectly okay mm -hmm. with where I'm at. And then mm -hmm. like use that as more of a motivator or is yeah. that a different, or is that a different kind of train of thought? It's just, you, it is, it's, it's almost like that's like farther down the line. Oh, okay. Okay. I, I think I get it. So it's almost like a catalyst where you're like, uh, you know, like I, I'm the best version of myself. And then this is how much better I can be kind of thing. Yeah, because what could happen? And um, so if you're like, you know what? This is the best version of who I can be, mm -hmm. but I can lose five pounds mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. What would happen at that point, since you already have that critical inner voice, mm -hmm. then your critical inner voice is going to be like, Psh, yeah, whatever. Oh, I understand. See what okay. I mean? Yeah. So, But if you have a positive voice, you're like, okay, well, let's let's take this and bump it up and mm -hmm. let's see how much better I can be. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Got it, got yeah. It, got it, got it's it. like, you know, if you have that, that good thinking, you're mm -hmm. like, yeah, you know what? I can lose five pounds and I'm totally motivated, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, but I mm -hmm. love myself I'm on awesome my right journey. Now. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm awesome. Sit right now. I'll be better even then. Okay. I, it makes total sense. Yeah. 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 So it's those little baby steps. Okay. And, yeah. and the thing is, is like your journey of fighting this critical inner voice, mm -hmm. you will find more energy and more strength as you go on. Sure. So it's just taking those little baby steps out of the gate mm -hmm. of just changing the way you sure. think about yeah, yourself. Yeah, I love it. And then I also too wanted to go back to the work mm -hmm. um, aspect of it. So if you feel, if your critical inner voice says, you know what, you're undervalued at work, mm -hmm. you don't do good enough, mm -hmm. you just have to be proud of the work that you do. Gotcha. You know, again, starting off with like, let's just say you feel underappreciated at work. Mm -hmm. You have to start feeling proud of your work mm -hmm. in order for other people to be proud of your work. Yeah, it makes sense. You know, and if you feel underappreciated, ask for promotions. Yeah. You know, all of a sudden it's like, you're not going to ask for a promotion if you're telling yourself that you're underrated. Mm -hmm. So again, it goes all the way back to how your critical inner voice makes you perceive your life. Sure. It's just, and to me, truthfully, Robert, when I started this subject, and mm -hmm. I think that this is one of the reasons why I had so many notes and, yeah. and wrote things out so much is because I really didn't put two and two together about how, how encompassing a critical inner voice is on every single aspect of life. Sure. You know, absolutely. You know, it, it's the difference between having a happy journey and having just a, um, a really just sad struggling journey through life, Yeah, you know? Mm -hmm. And then I do want to say that, um, I think everyone deserves a life without a critical inner voice yeah. and we are only, and we are the only ones who can give us that life. Sure. You know, nobody yeah. else can make you stop mm -hmm. being self-critical, but only you can. And I think that if you're out there and you're struggling with any sort of level of a critical self inner voice, mm. um, just know you deserve to live a life without that. Sure. You know, yeah. something has led you to that point, mm -hmm. but just know that you have the, the tools and the capacity mm -hmm. to start making those changes. Totally. Yeah. I love it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So like that's, it. no, I thought it was a really cool topic this week. Thank you. Yeah. And I think not only that, but I think it's, you know, like you say, like, you know, since we've started doing this, it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, like I can't wait to tell the audience that, but you're also like, oh, I can't wait to start implementing it. And exactly. I think that's the most important part. Exactly. Yeah. And I was thinking about it this week because I knew it was my, um, my time mm -hmm. to, to say the subject and I, what I was trying to avoid and what I do try to avoid is just like picking a subject and then like reading about it. Mm -hmm. And I really 
find that I'm having more self growth mm -hmm. by finding subjects that I struggle with sure. and that help me along my journey. Totally. Yeah. I mean, it's the difference between being something that like actively happens and then having like just a topic that you just Google, like yeah. things that people want to hear. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, you got no skin in the game. So yeah. no, I like, I like it. I like it. I thought it was really good. Yeah. yeah. And to me, it's like, again, it's, it's something that I know that, um, that I've struggled with yeah. and I will continue. And, and I, I struggled with, but now I am learning to control. Absolutely. Well, you know? like you say, you manifest a physical form and you can, you can, you know, combat it. Yeah. You know? And sometimes what's really, what really is bothersome sometimes is I just get tired of constantly fighting it. Mm -hmm. But I know if I don't, mm -hmm. it will come back and take hold. Mm -hmm. And when that happens to mm -hmm. me, it's like usually I'll just give myself, you know, a day of um, pampering sure. or or compassion mm -hmm. or, you know, mm -hmm. I'll eat those mashed potatoes mm -hmm. with a ice cream sundae yeah. for dinner yeah. or something like that. But and that's another subject that I'll do one day mm -hmm. is just, um, you know, when you do get into those funks, how to get out of them. I like it. Nothing. Because when you're in those funks, that's when that inner voice is just like the loudest. Yes. Yeah. 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 It's like, yes, I'm back. Yeah. No, I yeah. love it. I thought it was super cool. Yeah. yeah. So then next week's your week. Mm -hmm. And then the week after that will be my subject will be how to maintain that balance mm -hmm. because our inner voices aren't going away. Right. You know? Yeah. So I think that that's what I'll do. Good. I like yeah. it. Awesome. Well, do you want to tell them where to find us? I absolutely do. You can find Robert on Instagram as Robert, Robert Pike Pike. And then he is on Twitch, mm -hmm, YouTube, mm -hmm. and TikTok mm -hmm. as Sherbert. Yes. And that's S-U-R-E-B-E-R-T. That's right. Just in case you want to find him and... Devil's in the details. Yes. Because otherwise it's like Sher, like like S-H-E-R, like the ice cream. I'm familiar with oh, how okay. to spell Sherbert. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> just so you know, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. just giving you my spelling knowledge. I appreciate it. And then I am gray hair and tattoos across the board. And so for everybody watching this on YouTube, I, um, makeup free today. Yeah. yeah. So I dig it. Let my skin breathe. All nope. right, everybody have a great week. Yeah. Um, we appreciate each and every one of you and remember stop, listen to what you're saying and start doing something about it. Yeah. All right. See you next week, everyone. Bye. Bye.